it then. Hallelujah. Moses told us about it. Oh, I exceedingly feared and quaked. But amen. Thank God he still had a go. Oh, I got to see this. I got to see it. It's going to kill me. I got to see it. Oh, how many feel that way? There's something God's offering this generation. If we'll press in. Oh, it's fearful when we's in prayer that one time and then brass feet walk through that sanctuary. You talk about shake you to your bones. I tell you, heaven's wanting to invade the earth if we'll just open ourselves up to it. No telling what God will do. What happened? Brass feet walk through the sanctuary at 6 o'clock in the morning when it's dark. I'm knelt down praying, seeking him. Early had a fan full of people come in on it. We've been praying like that for over a year, and I've been doing it longer than that in secret sometimes. Ain't boasting about the time, just saying a hunger. Nothing to boast of, just a hunger driving early in the morning. And I look over, just don't know why I look, but God had me look. Hallelujah. And as I look, I saw a set of feet go through, brass feet. They went through, glowing with these wild, amen, look like pearls, hallelujah, wrapped around like sandals. Out of this world, brothers and sisters. I mean, I jumped up and I go around doing a shoe check. I'm all messed up. I don't know what to do. Then revival broke out. Two days later, people come from all over the place getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Delivered, that's what I did. They fell out on the floor walking in the sanctuary. <laughs> never put out one flyer, never did nothing, never advertised anything. Just prayed, hallelujah, and God filled the house Thank and went to Satan and delivered. Took people to baptize and we got in the water and God said, pray, I'm going to heat the lake. Oh, hallelujah. Weather colder than this. Got up there and God heated that whole lake in front of about 30, 40 people, praise the Lord. Heated that water, hallelujah. They jumped around, it's hot, it's hot. The hot air went off and hit all the people on the bank. They went to shouting. I'm telling you, things happen out of this world when we see God. Oh, he's supernatural. When we pray, we touch it. Oh, touch it. I know I'm a mess. Bear with me. I'm getting more messed up. I'm wanting to pray. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. I was up there in Quincy, and after he told me that, I started crying. After he said, I'll be with you. Oh, that keeps me through hard times. Even when I feel like I'm the biggest failure in the world, nobody wants anything to do with me. I began to roll back to what he said. Lord, he said he'd meet me along the way. Hallelujah. Yeah. Means more to me than any money in the world. Means more to me. Hallelujah. Love my wife, love my kids. God, but everything you say to me is more precious. Amen. Anything else. Thank you. I don't care who thinks I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy? You get locked up with God and see how crazy you are. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I seek him, man, and he spoke that to me. And as soon as he spoke it, I began to cry. And I began to repent for every time I felt to do something for him. And I didn't do it because I excused it as myself. And I said, God, give me unction. And I'll do it. You tell me, help me to do it. Don't let me doubt you. Just when I feel to do something, let me step out. And that's why sometimes we pray for the sick. We get a little radical. Because I feel to do this. I told the Lord I wanted to listen to him. Sometimes he does things that don't make sense. Hallelujah. Woo. So I'm seeking him. I'm, I'm joyful now. He spoke to me. He spoke to me. And I go to the lunch hall. I'm going to eat now. I grab me some barbecue chicken to get with the rest of the preachers. Something about chickens and preachers, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> but if we'd ever get the chicken out of the preacher, he might be worth something. <laughs> <laughs> I could be in chickens. We can eat chicken, but we ought not be chicken. Somebody's with me. Amen. Don't be a chicken. Eat chicken. Oh, whatever. But I get my chicken and head that way with that barbecue looking good, smelling good. I get by the preachers and God said, throw that away. He said, go to the park. I knew what he was talking about. That's where I've been preaching. So I told the other preacher with me, I said, throw that away. He's got barbecue everywhere. I mean, that guy's working on it. <laughs> get rid of that. We're going to the park. You know, God didn't tell me to take him with me, but I was taking him for a witness. I thought if I go to jail, I'm going to have somebody to go with me. I'll be an Because when I get that kind of thing on me, it might get dangerous. Hallelujah. Because I don't find reverse very good. Fourth gear is good, but sometimes I get in double low when it gets bad, but I'm still going forward. I'm going to understand what that's like. You just got to go. Amen. When God tells you to do something, you've got to go. You've got to check it out. You've got to see what's on the other side. Hallelujah. Well, he said, go to the park. So we're headed to the park. I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't tell him everything he said. I just said, God said, go to the park. I didn't tell him about all this stuff. So we're headed over there. And I don't know what I'm fixing to eat. God said he'd meet me a long way. I don't know if I'm going to meet the Lord, but I'm going to meet. But I know I've been told to go. Prayer will bring you things from heaven. Amen. Nobody can ever take something. It says a lot of preachers try to get me out of their companies. A lot of preachers don't like me. A lot of church folk can't stand me. But you can't stop me if I can pray. That's Amen. right. I'm not trying to be approved of men. I just want to know the Lord. Thank you, God. Just 
just want to love him. I want to see other people like him. People like myself have come out of such a life of hell and trouble, come up with their face glowing because God blessed them. Hallelujah. How many believe <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm heading to that park. And as I get close to it, about a block away, I look down there and there's a white-headed man sitting on a park bench. I mean, just as precious white hair you ever saw. Not a hair out of place. <laughs> block away. I'm looking at him and he's looking at us. We're coming down through there, and he ain't taking our eyes off, so all of a sudden he goes back to looking up. He's just looking up. And I get down there by him, and I cannot pass him up. I'm like, <coughs> and I just look at him. I ain't saying nothing. I'm a mess already. <laughs> I'm just looking at him. I don't know why, but all I know is God says, go to the park. Here I am. The brother that's with me starts talking to the man. He said, uh, what you doing? <laughs> now, the guy has got his leg crossed. He's got a cup sitting on his knee, and he's shaking it all over. And that cup shouldn't be staying there. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, maybe you've been praying too long. <laughs> I'm like, huh? But he's a, you know, I'm looking at him. The other guy, you know, he just had chicken on the brain. <laughs> no, he's a good guy too. I'm just kidding. Praise the Lord. But he's like, uh, what you doing? The guy said, I've just come down from my high place for lunch. I play some. Oh, mm -hmm. He says, I'm a roofer. And he starts laughing. I mean, this guy ain't dirty at all. I've roofed plenty of times. Never looked like that. <laughs> all of a sudden, he starts talking about the park we're in, Quincy Park. So there's a famous debate here one time between Lincoln and Douglas. And he starts telling us all kinds of stuff like that. Now, I'm just listening. I have not said a thing, but it feels like to me this man's talking about an experience that he witnessed, you know. Like he's talking about something he's physically seen. He said, Brother Aaron, and he said, I'm afraid of heights. And actually he talked about coming from his high place, and he looked at him funny, and he keeps on his story. And finally, the other brother, he says to him, he says, uh, where are you from? He said, I'm from Bethel. And I lost it. You know, Bethel's all in the scriptures. It means the house of God. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of do that, and I said, Bethel! <laughs> I'm losing it. He said, yeah, boy. He locked eyes with me, and he said, the house of God. And he said, God wants you to know something. He said, he wants you to live a separated life. Not like the Mennonites and I'm separated away from people, but separated amongst them. He started talking to me about separation and other things. And just other things he talked to me about. He was messing me up. I'm, you know, I'm all, woo, 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 you know. Because I know I did pray. God said he's going to meet me along the way. Angel, I don't know what I'm looking at. But one thing for sure, I ain't saying a whole lot. <laughs> and he keeps talking. Finally, I, I'm, I'm like, Brother Clinton's fixing to have a prayer meeting. If you're late to that, he'll kick you out. <laughs> you know, this old preacher don't play. You know, he sent people home from Russia that was late to a prayer meeting. I mean, this guy does not play. 86 years old, he ain't joking. And that man says, I know who he is. He'll be all right. Don't worry about him. And he kept talking to me. When we get ready to leave, the man gets up. And as he's walking off, he turns and he looks at us. And he says, be like in the book of Daniel. He said, even if you are going to burn, don't bow. And he said, by the way, there's coming a time when you'll not be afraid of heights. I'm telling you, folks, if we'll pray, God will send you witnesses along the way to confirm your prayer life. He'll send the answers to prayer. He told his disciples that their joy is full when their prayers are answered. It makes your joy full. It makes your life worth living when you touch God for things that nobody else knows about and it's secrets between you and the Lord. And then God begins to do it for you. Are you with me tonight? Amen. You don't have to just spend a bunch of time playing religious games. You need time to get along with God. That's what these altars are for. That's why this nation's got to learn again what it means to have an altar in the house of God. What it means to stand there and see a place of prayer. God's house, a place where we touch God. Come on, man. We've made the house of God a dinner hall. We've made the house of God an entertainment diet where everybody comes and hears their favorite music. Their favorite, not God's. We've made it a place where people hang out. And there's plenty of sound of bead buzzing, but it's never prayer. It's always people running their lips. I mean, you know, there's a big difference between what we call fellowship and what the first century church called fellowship. Amen. Because if their lips were moving, they were cry preaching to you. How many wants to get back to what's been lost?